Hey, welcome back, everybody. We're taking this episode in another different direction. This came as a suggestion by a listener, and I appreciate the feedback. Their comment was, how about not having the overarching topic for the episode and just presenting tips for each of the groups? That's what we're going to do. We're going to give this a try. Let's get into round 11 of the tactical transition tips. This time, there's no primary topic. There's only tips for each of the groups. For the close range group, practice being more patient. For the medium range group, self-promotion. And for the long range group, travel more now. transition out is try to model all of the good things, the discipline, the structure, that little bit of rigidity into your everyday life. And I think that that's a great way to make that transition happen, man. Figuring out who you are, not how, what you did. It's not who you are. It's just, it's a piece, but it's not the whole you. Take the time to invest in yourself because it's, it means everything. You know, that's what the difference is. The difference is not just to collect the check. It's to live 25 years, 30, 40 years after you retire and pay it forward that way. So for my close range group, patience. Sometimes easier said than done. You guys are in that range right now where transition is on your horizon. If you're being forced into a transition I'm going to say I'm sorry. I'm hoping that the forced transition has a long-term benefit for you. But there's going to be a lot going on regardless. Whether this was planned or unplanned, your transition is coming, and there's going to be a lot of stress in your life. Be patient. When you're thinking about finding work after you make your transition, set realistic timelines. You have to understand that For those of you that aren't in the fortunate group who already have yours lined up, and if you already do, great. But for the greater majority of us, even if with even if we have a plan of where we want to get to, that testing process, that hiring process, that process of onboarding is going to take time. If we're still working today, Many of us are not in a position where we can actually go through that onboarding process with the new company until we're officially a former at our current company. So I would say that at minimum, you probably need to be looking at a window of about four to six months. It could potentially take longer. It could be a lot shorter. But I would say put yourself in a four to six month window of where you're going to need to be able to sustain yourself until you, the the new job kicks in. Also understand this, finding the perfect job may not happen right away. Even more, because it's not going to happen right away, and I, I temper how I say this, consider what in your eyes, might be a lesser position. And the only reason I say this is because at the end of the day, you have to take care of you and your family. You still have bills to pay. The you know the mortgage company is not going away. They're not going to take a pause while you find your new job. Your car com- or the car loan company is not going to take a pause while you find your new job. So unfortunately, if you don't have the ability to plan for your finances to ride out potentially longer than six months, then you're going to need to consider taking what might be a lesser job to speed up this process. And maybe it just becomes your stepping stone spot. And you stay in this for a year, two years, gain some more experience, and again, start looking for what might be your perfect job. We come from an environment where It's normal for us to take control. Our jobs require that we are the ones, when everything else is going to shit, 
we stand strong, we stand tall and get it done. The problem is, is that when it comes to your transition, when it comes to finding that next job, trying to be the bull in the china shop and just taking control isn't necessarily the best option or the best course of action. There is going to need, you're going to need to have a little bit of a step back mentality in that you want to be patient. You want to allow for things to progress and develop at their own pace, but you can't force it. So it may be counterintuitive to what's normal for you to like, let me just take control of this and get this done. And that may just may not be the way it's going to be. So put yourself in that patience mindset Understand that there's going to be a small window during this transition and try to allow yourself to ride it out. At the same token, be patient. No one's discrediting that or discounting that. On the counter side, be persistent. So you've applied at a company, you've been in the hire, you've gotten into the hiring process with a company, you're in a phase with this company, don't simply say, well, I'll just wait for them to contact me. You're in a pool of other people. There may be a time, just like with you at work today, there might be stuff that takes up your attention and you forget about other things. You're in the same position. You're just a name and a number on a spreadsheet to whoever's doing the hiring process. Be patient, but be persistent. If you don't hear from somebody over a couple weeks or whenever you have contact with somebody, you can ask them, when can I expect to hear back from you? And if they say you'll hear something in five days or you'll hear something in two weeks, whatever that window is, when that window comes and you haven't heard anything, reach out. Very professional, very polite. Wondering what's the current status of the process? Is there anything I can do to be of benefit to it? So be patient, but at the same token, be persistent. In this downtime that you're going to inevitably have, take steps to improve yourself. Whether it's you start studying the company and learn more about it, its CEO, its mission, how it originated, Become more versed in the job that you're going to do. If you have that opportunity, reach out to other people who do that same job. Find out more of the minutia and the day-to-day that they do. Maybe even, if you can, go have lunch with one of them and get to know a little bit more about what their day-to-day is like. Be better prepared for when that time actually comes that they say, hey, next Monday you're starting. Also, in this downtime, don't allow yourself to get into a rut. It's real easy to get up each day and not really have a clear direction of what you need to do. And it it will foster the ability for you to just basically become a couch potato or whatever or get into a rut of bad habits. Get up each morning like you're going to work. Take a shower. Get yourself ready. Create yourself a to-do list for each day and make your task getting those whatever they are. Maybe it's studying a little bit more about the job that you're going to. Maybe it's not relying on one application and maybe you're doing research on other jobs that you might want to apply for. Regardless of what it is, create a list and make those tasks your job for the day. For my medium range group, Self-promotion. You're three to five years out. Start thinking now about you in that position that you want to get to. Imagine you've already got this job. Look at how you fit into that field, into that position, into that company, whatever it is. And start looking for what are your weaknesses. And then on the back side, build those weaknesses. But on the front side, take any opportunity you can 
to meet or even if you're by happenstance come across somebody who's in that industry every opportunity you can tell somebody about yourself and the job that you want to get to start p- connecting your name with the position that you want because what will happen is though you're not ready to transition today the more people that you talk to the more that you let it be known I want to get to X, whatever X is. And the more people that know that, if they're industry people, if they're friends, if they're families, if they're coworkers, whoever, you never know who they're talking to. So self-promotion starts with just getting it out into the universe that you want to get to a specific company, a specific job, whatever it is, get it out there in in the universe. At the same token, you need to have some modesty. You want to have, you want to be humble in that you know you're able to do a given job. So you want to, in that sense, brag about your qualifications. But, and we've all met people like this, there's one thing about bragging about your abilities and there's another thing about being cocky or boastful about your abilities. You've got to walk that that subtle line. And I'll be honest with you, I don't know what that would be for each of you. Only you do. And one of the things that you can do is ask for feedback. So when you're talking to people and you're telling them where you want to get to and what company you would like to work for, one a nice follow-up might be, how did I come across to you? How might I better pitch myself? How might I better promote myself? Because they're going to be able to give you an honest evaluation of how you come across. Take that critique, criticism, whatever you want to call it, and improve on it. But keep promoting yourself whenever you have the ability to. If you can, start putting yourself in those industry in the, those industry groups if you can go to meetings if you can get into the online forums whatever but again your goal for getting in there is to start making your name known today so that tomorrow when you need that job you're on people's radars going back to the modesty aspect or or the humility aspect be confident in your ability when you're interacting in any of these functions or with any of these people. Be engaged in trying to learn and be a part of however much they'll let you be part of that group. At the same token, be thinking about the persona that you're presenting in these groups. Are you turning people off or are you making people want to engage with you more? And again, that's going to come from you also seeking feedback. When you meet with somebody, especially if it's somebody that you've never known or didn't know previously, don't use that one meeting as a fire and forget it. Follow up with them. Send them an email a couple days later. Hey, so-and-so, it was really nice meeting you at XYZ Function. I would like to stay in contact if possible. And then even if they don't, you still follow up. It doesn't have to be daily. It could be once every other month once a month, whatever you feel comfortable with, whatever the relationship kind of dictates. If you hit it off with that person and you want to maybe get together for lunch on a regular basis, do it. But stay in contact with people so that when you're building this network of people who know you, they they you stay in the forefront of their mind as opposed to you meet them today and literally a week later they can't remember you because you're not staying on top of it. And so I, I'm kind of contradicting myself. I get it. But what I'm what I'm trying to say is you meet today. Don't think that that one meeting is going to do it for you. I'm not saying you have to reach back in a week. I would reach back for an initial one in a couple days. But just stay in regular contact with them so that you stay at the forefront of their mind. You need to be genuine and you need to be authentic. If you're simply thinking that 
the the flavor of the month right now is project management. Every time I turn around, I'm seeing new advertisements for project manager positions. I, I don't know if it's something that is crept in or the fact that maybe I'm just more attuned to them. But what I'm getting at is whatever the position you're looking to get to, when you're talking to somebody from that company, from that industry, if you really don't want that position, you just think that, uh, I guess that's the the best I can hope for, or there's nothing really else that out there that I want. If you're not genuine and authentic about wanting to get to that position, one, it's either going to come across in that you're not going to promote yourself the best. Your promotion or, or when you talk about yourself, you're probably going to even maybe subconsciously downplay yourself a little bit because maybe you don't feel like you're qualified enough or it's not really what you want. On the flip side, we've all talked to people who aren't sincere in what they're saying. So even though in your mind you think you're being sincere when you're talking to people and you're telling them, oh, I really want this job, that's the job I want, they might be able to see through you. And so they might be writing you off as they're talking to you going, this person's not really interested in this. So be genuine and be authentic. Practice your sales pitch. You are a commodity. Your skills, your abilities, what you bring to the table has value. Start learning how to pitch that value when you've got the opportunity. They call it an elevator pitch. But basically, whoever you end up talking to, getting the opportunity opportunity to engage with, have that 30 to 40 second spiel that talks about who you are and what value you bring to that given company or that given position and refine it over time. Record yourself giving that pitch and think how you would like to receive it or how you would receive it if somebody was telling you the same thing and work on it because you don't want the, oh, I should have said when you're walking away from them or you don't want it to be where it sounds like you're trying to recall the important points for you regarding your skills, your abilities, your your experiences, that type of stuff while you're talking to them because that those breaks where you're thinking doesn't keep them engaged with you. You want a, from a start to finish, you want them to be engaged with who you are and what value you're bringing to them or to their company. This I know this is a touchy area. If you're going to be on social media, Make it work for you. Make it be something that if somebody goes to start following you on social media, it's not something that they're going to regret or something that potentially they're going to say to their employers or if this is the employer, we don't want to hire this person. So I'm not going into that soapbox of what's appropriate on social media, what's not appropriate. You have to decide yourself what is appropriate for you and the product and the promotion that you want to put out on social media. So think about what you're posting. Think about the memes and the videos and everything else. And what does it represent about you? Does it promote you in the best light or does it put you in a, a light of, man, we might not want to hire that person. So use social media to your advantage. Embrace it. Don't hide from it, but just think about the image that you're putting out there. For my long range group, you've got a long time till you're going to transition. The one thing that we all talk about, and I don't believe that I'm the only one in this group, we all talk about all the traveling we want to do when we retire. I have not traveled as much as I would have liked to or... I even say should have in my career. There's a lot of places currently that now that I'm retired, I'm still thinking, okay, when am I going to get to wherever it is? Take advantage now. Travel now. Unfortunately for many of us, waiting until we retire may not be optimal. You might be dealing with an injury. You might be dealing with a myriad of issues when it comes time to quote-unquote retire. 
that you might not be able to either be able to or enjoy traveling. So travel now. Set an annual trip as the goal for each year. It doesn't have to be a monstrous trip, but set something to plan for for the following year. Maybe you pick a new destination each year as, as opposed to going back to the same location over and over. But use traveling in a, in a, ver- a variety of ways. First and most important, prioritize your overall health and fitness. And how does traveling help that? Because it gets rid of the stress that we all deal with. Think about how much you would enjoy just being outside your four walls and away from your work for seven days, once a year, twice a year, if you can afford it, three times, whatever. But that mental health, that decompression, that stress relief, whatever you want to call it, by just getting away. But in conjunction with that, yeah, go have fun, relax, but work into your traveling some physical fitness. Go for walks. Go explore the city where you're visiting. Go for hikes. Do stuff that keeps you active so that long-term, not only is your mental health better, your physical health is better. Traveling more now, I I, I think that, that all of us can agree with this. It helps you spend better quality time with your family. When you're at work every day, when you're at home, in the evening, whatever your shift is, you have so many external influences on what takes place in your life. I'll throw myself under the bus. Our family sometimes gets put on the back burner. So if you can gather up your entire family and take everybody someplace new, someplace that all of you are looking forward to going to visit, it gives you all a common goal to aim for for the following year. You can use it, though, as a way of preparing for your transition. The most obvious, start looking at sites or cities or locations or wherever now that you might think, "Ah, I might like to retire there or when I get done with this, I want to relocate here. Go find out if if you would enjoy living there. Go find out if there's work for you in those locations. Go find out if simply having seen it in pictures or videos from somebody else matches what you experience when you're in person as opposed to you retire, you sell everything lock, stock, and barrel, you take that new job in the new city, and then you get there and you find out that it doesn't meet what your family wants or you just don't like it. So start getting a feel for it now. If you do find that spot that you feel is, this is it. This is where we're moving to. This is where we're going to relocate to. Maybe you make that an annual destination and you try a different portion of the city or you try a different area to check out, but use it for reconnaissance before you're actually going to transition. On the, on the simplest thing, go see new things. Expand your horizons. Traveling improves your adaptability. We've all had those experiences, flight delays, car rental mishaps, luggage is, you know, gets lost, whatever it is. The more times that you can deal with that, the better you become at, be, at adapting to unusual scenarios. It may seem a stretch, but it does. It improves your adaptability. If you can be a little bit more better about just going with the flow, or you can also, in a weird way, but you can market it towards your ability to problem solve. And if during an interview with whatever company, or maybe you're sitting down and you're talking with the CEO, and not only do you have the stories of being well-traveled, and being able to to have a, a completely unrelated conversation as it in in the sense of the job you're applying for and maybe you end up on a 20 minute conversation with the CEO about your trip to Nashville or your trip to 
Puerto Rico or wherever, it, it expands your marketability. But also, if you all can, can work in those problem stories, the, you know, I, I would say when you're trying to pitch it in a positive sense, you don't make it as the, the trip from hell. You, you make it as the, yeah, we, you know, we went on this trip and we encountered this problem and here's how I worked around it. And we encountered this problem and here's how I worked around it. You're problem solving and you're using your vacation as a means of working on being a better problem solver. If you happen to want to work for a big company, an international company, the more worldly you are, the more you travel the globe and have experiences outside of what is your norm, outside the United States, visiting other countries, it again increases your marketability. It increases your ability to relate to their customers, to their other employees, because you may be looking at a position that's going to require you to not only have an office, say, in San Francisco, but it might have you have an office in Lisbon, Portugal, or Africa, wherever. Having experienced already traveled in those countries is going to benefit you. It teaches you how to work within a budget. You set a budget for a trip, whether it be a year from now, six months, and then you work within that budget. Again, you're marketing yourself to a company. You're, you're, it's not something where, hey, I want to take this trip and it's going to be $10,000 and then all of a sudden it starts creeping up. Oh, no, actually we're going to do this and it's $12,000. You, you set your budget for your trip and then work within that budget. Traveling allows you to expand your network. I can't tell you the number of people and the conversations that I've had sitting in an airport waiting to board a flight or sitting next to somebody on a flight. Now, granted, none of them have materialized into a new job for me when I made my transition away from law enforcement, but it expanded my network of people that I know. It expanded, at the basic sense, my ability to talk to somebody brand new, a stranger. So use that time that you're hanging out in an airport, having a drink, waiting on your flight or whatever. Engage in conversation with people because you never know who that one person might happen to be and what they might be in the sense of a benefit for you down the road. I've said this already, but at the core of it, we need to be interesting when we're sitting across the table from somebody trying to get a job. And having traveled many places makes us more interesting. Like it or not, the more things that you've experienced in your life and the more places that you've been that you can have a potentially relatable story to the other person that you're talking to makes you more interesting. So closing this up. Be more patient. Transitioning is stressful enough. Everything we're going to go through in our transition, no matter how well we've planned for it, is going to be stressful. Don't add to it by being impatient. Nobody is going to promote you the way you promote yourself. Nobody is going to care about what you want for your next career more than what you want for yourself. So you need to be your best self-promoter. You need to be that amazing salesperson. Um, and I don't want to use the term used car salesman because, but in, the, in that sense, uh, in a little bit, it's kind of got to be over the top because you're promoting who you are. You can't expect your resume to promote you as well as you can promote yourself. Be confident in who you are in your skills and your ability, but be humble. Don't wait to travel. We spend so much time hoping or wanting to do things 
after we're out of these careers or any career. But the thing is, is there's a lot of us, and we I'm sure many of you know people in that same position who talked about all the traveling they were going to do when they retired or when they shut it down, whatever you want to call it, and then something else happened, a medical issue, you know, financial, whatever. So take advantage now, plan for it, travel today, spend better quality time with your family, and make yourself more versatile when it comes time to pitching yourself for a new job. As always, thank you for taking the time to listen. Please follow, please share, please like the podcast, leave a comment. All of that stuff helps the podcast get in front of more eyes. The more eyes that it gets in front of, it helps it grow, which then I could potentially hopefully monetize it and then turn that money around into making the podcast even better. Guess whatever. Let me know what you think about this new format. If you don't like the overarching topic and just three tips for each group. And other than that, I'll see you soon.